So recently I uploaded a tutorial for how I control my Lego trains using Pybricks, and I wanted to share some recent developments with the program. The original program was written by Lock24, a Eurobricks user. It allows for smooth acceleration. You can just hold the button down and you can also easily reverse the direction of motors. Uh, so instead of having to turn one of these around to control each motor individually, that's the only option Lego really gave you. Um, you can just combine it into one button. And then recently, a member of our community, Ampersand, has been making updates to the program. So he added support for lights. So you can see you can just turn them on and off, or you can slowly brighten and dim and, uh, you know, whatever power level you want. And then now we have the multi-unit or distributed power update. So I'm using those terms specifically because that's what they are called in real trains. So uh, as of right now, these are all kind of what you would see in a multi-unit setup where you would have all of your locomotives uh, at the front of the train and they would all be connected together directly so that the lead locomotive can control the rest of them and they can all power the train as one unit. And distributed power is a more recent way of doing things where they actually can talk to each other wirelessly and you could have the trains anywhere throughout. So you could have a locomotive at the very end of a, a train or throughout the middle and that can help with inclines and things like that. And thanks to all the hard work that Ampersand has put in, we now have that ability using Pybricks with our Lego trains. So quickly, uh, we can look at the Maersk train. Um, I have two powered locomotives. The middle one is just a dummy unit and I have 10 cars behind it. So it's quite a lot for a Lego train to move, but you can see I just hold down the button and it just slowly speeds up and pulls the train pretty effortlessly for how much it's pulling. And that's because each of these locomotives has dual motors. Uh, so we have a total of four motors moving the train. And it very much works in the way uh, distributed power does in real trains, where there is one Piper script on the lead locomotive. And that's kind of the main version of the program. And if you enable broadcasting, it will start sending out Bluetooth packets on a specific channel. So each of these trains is going to be in a different channel. And then there's another script that you would put on your observer locomotives and they will look for those broadcasts. And if it's on the correct channel, it will mirror what the lead locomotive is doing. So if you set speed, uh, the lights work with it as well. And it works really great. There's a little bit of lag between like the lead locomotive and the observer kind of picking up on it. It's a fraction of a second, and I think that's going to lower over time as Pybrix makes more updates to the firmware. And one situation I'm really happy about is my 60197 passenger train. So I bought three, three copies of the set, and I have a locomotive all the way at the end, and then we have the lead locomotive here. And in the past, I had to take the rear locomotive and turn the motor around physically inside of the build, run the wire through the back, and then I could tr control the hubs together using the standard Lego firmware. But I like this solution a lot better because one, I love the smooth acceleration option. Um, and of course we have the lights that are also controlled from a single button. So I can just turn them on hitting the stop button there. And you can see we have light white lights there. Go ahead and pull the train forward here. And we have uh, red lights on the rear. And uh, I, I just love the way this train handles when you have motors on each end. Um, it was one I had issues with going through switch tracks, uh, forward and reverse, things like that, uh, until I went with a dual powered locomotive setup. So that's pretty much it. I just, it's kind of an announcement video. This video is not monetized. If you happen to get an ad, uh, that's on YouTube's end. I can't control that. But I just wanted to put something together and get the word out about this. Uh, there will be lots of links in the description, the Eurobricks discussion thread, uh, the GitHub page where you can download these programs. Again, it's a separate program for the lead locomotive and the observer locomotives. And there will also be a link to our Discord where all of this kind of came about uh, in our community projects channel where I kind of uh, gripe about things I would like to have and then Ampersand makes it happen. <laughs> So again, I'm very appreciative of all that hard work. And one other thing I'll mention is of course, for each locomotive, you'll be able to set your motors in whatever directions you need to. So in a standard kind of multi-unit setup like this or, or like this, 
the locomotives will probably be facing away from each other. Because what they'll do is they'll run a train all the way to the end of the line, disconnect from the cars, run around to the other end of the train, and then move the crew from this locomotive to that one, and then now they'll just drive from there. So you can easily just go into the observer program and then just reverse the directions of the motors, just like you would with any Pybrick's train, and you're good to go. So again, I do have a tutorial that can help you get started. You won't have to do any actually programming yourself. You'll just have to change a few settings and you'll be good to go. So thanks for watching, and I hope many of you found this useful.